we're going to start is a we're going to go along with a national campaign that is coming out of Saddleback Community Church in California. This is the church that Pastor Rick Warren pastors. And if you'll remember some years ago, he came out with a book called The Purpose Driven Life. And many of you, many of you had that book, many of you read that book. We as a church went through that process together as well. Um, they have updated the, the book, and they've added chapters, and they've updated the book, and they've, they've built a new sermon series for it, and literally, nationally, churches all across the nation are going through this series. We're going to join in that. We don't do this often. If you've been here for very long, you'll know that there's really two authors that I've pushed this hard. It's Rick Warren and Truett Cathy are the only two I've ever pushed this hard. Uh, but I, I believe in these folks, and I, and I believe in what God has done using this book, using this process. In fact, I'll tell you, um, 15 years ago, Tina and I, for the first time, uh, went out to Southern California and attended what was then known as the Purpose Driven Church Conference. Literally within months of going to that conference, we were called to come here. We implemented what we learned at that conference here, and quite honestly, the Purpose Driven Church Conference, the Purpose Driven Church structure, is the structure God used in our lives in order to bring about a, a, a system that would allow this church to grow from 75, 80, all the way up to last Sunday, 2,500 people just in this church alone. So, um, so... Needless to say, I believe in this stuff. You say, well, uh, you know, I don't always hear great things about Rick Warren. Well, uh, is there anybody in the public spotlight that you do always hear good things about? Uh, I believe in this guy. I've watched him for 15 years. I've not seen anything in him or about him that would make me want to turn and run for the hills. So we're going to get into this. So we have ordered a bajillion of these books, okay? But everybody pick a book. Here's how this is going to work. You take this book today. When you read through the first section, section one, it, it's what on earth am I here for is section one. It's got seven readings. You read those seven readings, you will be prepared for next week's sermon. That's the way that'll work. And then your community group will also go through this, and your community group will then, after that sermon, talk to you about that sermon. You'll have a deeper discussion about that sermon, and then you start reading on the next week. You're prepared for the next week's sermon. That's the way this will work for the next seven weeks, except for today. Today, we are adding a sermon on the front end of this, all right? Now, everybody do this for me because I need to take care of the type A's in the room, okay? Pull out the bulletin that you're supposed to write on. Everybody got that? You got that in front of you? Now, very gently take it and set it aside. All right? Not going to use it. Not going to fill in the blanks. Not going to fill in the blanks. I, I, I felt last night that I needed to shift this sermon before I stepped up to preach. I did not listen to that feeling. I left the room last night convinced I should have listened. And so today I'm going to listen. And here's what we want to talk about today. Here's what we want to front this whole thing with and prepare ourselves all the way to Easter for. We want to start with the idea, the truth, the absolute truth, that prayer changes things because prayer changes me. I want to start there. I want to talk to you about prayer today. And I want to talk to you about how to pray. Because here's what I'm convinced of. I'm convinced that everybody believes in prayer, but I'm not convinced that everybody knows how to pray. And if you don't know how to pray, prayer feels very awkward. Some of you, if you weren't trying to put on the spiritual face and looked like you had it all together this morning, would admit to me, I, prayer's just weird, preacher. I've tried it. It's just odd. It's like talking to a wall. It's like talking to the air. It's like nothing's there and I'm running my mouth. Prayer's just odd. And it feels like one of those doo -doo 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 moments to me, you know? Well, today I want to give you a structure that will help you with prayer. I want to give you a structure that will help you with prayer. And I'm going to make it real simple for you. In fact, let me tell you where my notes are. My notes are right here. All right. Literally, I have written on my hand. All right. I have written my notes on my fingers because there's five things I want to point out to you today. You say, well, where am I going to write my notes? Because there's not enough room on this thing. You got all this. You don't have to, but you could. All right, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, there's five things I want you to know about prayer, five things I want to teach you. You say, well, how am I going to remember those five things? Well, let's attach them to something you already know. Let's attach them to the Lord's Prayer, because this is where Jesus taught us how to pray anyway. So let me attach five things that you should know 
to one thing that most of you already know. Now, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. And just in case you don't know it, it's okay, because not everybody knows it. If you've been in church your whole life, you know it. If you're a Catholic, you're going, well, it's about time they said the Lord's Prayer in church. So we're going to do that. Don't think I don't know that. All right? So, uh, but we're going to say it together, and it'll be up on the screen. And you'll get each line, and we'll read it together. There's five real lines in this. Yes, I'm going to leave the very last one off for those of the so don't freak out, all right? Because I'm going to stick with the things I want to teach inside of the Lord's Prayer here, right? So let's see what stand with me, and let's read this together, okay? Here we go. Here we go. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. You can have a seat. Yes, we read it in the NIV, and some of you quoted it in King James. I heard you. I heard you out there. And some of y'all are going, we're not done yet. we got to say the last line. Stay with me. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's all Bible, all right? It's all Bible. I want you to know five things about prayer that will help you focus on prayer. Look at this first line again. Look at this line. Read it with me one more time. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Point one. Point one is very simple. When you pray, you need to start with praise. I literally wrote praise on my thumb right there. You got to start with praise. You got to start by praising God for who He is and what He's done. Folks, I got to tell you, if you will start every prayer that way, it will adjust the way the rest of your prayer goes, and it will adjust the way the rest of your day goes. You got to start with praise. God has done so much for us. Some of y'all are praising God for the snow this morning. That's wrong, but it's okay. It's okay. You praise God for that stuff, all right? And, and I'm going to praise God when we get back to 70, 80, 90, 100 degrees. I'm going to be praising the Lord then. You know, look, we praise God for what he's done. I got to tell you, I mean, simple little things. I know I make this sound simple, but folks, Wednesday when it was like 65, 70 degrees around here, literally, I was praising God all day long. I was at, Because I see any time we hit 60 or more in February, I just consider that God smiling down and saying, Michael, I still like you. I know you're there. That's just the way I see that. You know, and, and you, you just got to praise God for things. You got, and you got to praise him for little things and you got to praise him for big things. You got to praise him for things that happened and things that didn't happen. You got to praise him for stuff he delivered you from and stuff he never let you see in the first place. You got to praise God for what you know he's done and what you don't know he's done. You've got to praise God at every turn. Every prayer, every prayer should start with praising God. Our Father who art in heaven. I said it in King James, hallowed be your name. You know, listen, you got to begin with praise. Now read the second line. You, everybody got it, right? Praise, right? Say that with me, praise. Hold you, well, I can't do that all the way through because I'll have one point that messes up, but <laughs> praise. <laughs> your kingdom, read this with me. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's do it this way, praise. The next one is plan. It's God's plan. It's his praise, and it's his plan. You need to, you, you, you need to adjust that when you pray. Because most of us, when we pray, we're going to God asking God to do something for us. Most of the time when we pray, we're going to God and we're asking God to change something for us or adjust something for us or send us something or take something away. We're asking God to do something for us. Before you get to the place when you ask God to do something for you, adjust your mind to the point that you understand it's His plan, not yours. It's His world, not yours. It's his choice, not yours. And in the end, you need to understand you want his plan, not yours. You think you want your plan. I know you think you want your plan. I understand that you believe truly deep down inside of you that you want what you want and you're right and God should do what you want. But in the end, what you really want is not what you want. What you really want is what he wants because what he wants is what you want because it'll make you better. Everybody got that? 
I mean, what we want is his plan. We want him to be in charge. Do you remember when you were a teenager? Those of you who are older than teenager? Remember when you were a teenager and your parents didn't let you do something that you really thought they ought to let you do and how angry you were? I mean, you truly, in the core of who you are, believed that they were wrong. You, you were ready to take up a picket signs and march on Washington. You were so convinced that they were wrong. You weren't making it up. You weren't faking. Okay, sometimes you were faking it, but at th that point I'm talking about, you weren't faking it. It was real. And they said no. And you were angry. And you stayed angry. You made a point. You thought about it during the day. Don't calm down. Stay angry. <laughs> now, 5, 10, 15, 20 years later, you're looking back and you're going, oh, thank God they didn't let me do that. <laughs> then you sincerely were angry. Now you truly understand. Same thing will happen with God. In the end, what you want is his plan, not yours. And so as you pray, start with praise. Recognize his greatness. And then surrender to his plan in your life. Whatever that may be. It may not be what you want. It may not be the answer you want. It may not be the direction you want. But it is best for you. Because he is the God of all time and all eternity and all things. And he knows. He's already looking at what you don't even know about. And so what you want is his direction. So give him his praise. Surrender to his plan. Read the next one. Read the next line with me. Give us today our daily bread. Thirdly, give him his praise. Surrender to his plan and recognize his power. Recognize his power. He's the one that provides for you. He, even the simple things, even the loaf of bread, God has provided for you. You say, well, I have plenty of power to go buy a loaf of bread. Wait, 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 time out. Why do you have the power to buy a loaf of bread? Because God gave it to you. You need the power of God even to find your daily bread, much less to accomplish anything else in this world. Because, listen, everything you are, listen, you got to hear this. Everything you are incapable of, he is capable of. Now, here's where we get to the asking part. See what's happened? I've shifted my thinking. I've given him his praise, so I've recognized his greatness. I've surrendered to his plan, so I've recognized his sovereignty and the fact he's in control. Now, understanding that it's his plan and his, power, his, his praise and his plan, I now can submit to his power and ask for things and do so with the right attitude. Do so in the right perspective. Do so in the right way. See, when I ask God for things, already having given him praise and surrendered to his will, I ask him not demanding somehow, but asking him as a willing follower, a submitted servant of his. Now I'm asking in a different way. The Bible's clear. We can come to the throne with boldness. Everybody's got that? You don't have to slink your way up to the throne of grace. You can come to the throne with boldness, but you better not come with arrogance. Everybody got that? We learn to come to the throne crawling on our knees. And what resets our thinking is when we give him his praise and we surrender his plan before we ask for his power. But once we get to that point, you need to recognize there's nothing you can ask for that is beyond his power. He can do all things. He may not because it's his plan, not yours. But he can. If he chooses not to do something in your life, it's not because he lacks ability. It's because he knows what's best. And we don't understand that all the time. I, 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 just, to, just to be totally straight with you, we don't understand that all the time. It doesn't make sense. There are some things that God allows there are some things that happen in our lives that honestly, we're not going to understand this side of eternity. But it's not because God lacks the power to do it. 
It's because God knows what's best for us, and we're living in His plan anyway. Remember? His plan. We praise Him. We give Him His praise. We surrender in His plan. And then we ask for His power. And He is our Father. One more point on this before I move on. Some people feel like they just can't ask God for anything. The Bible speaks to you. And I want you to hear what the Bible says. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. You say, well, God's a busy guy. I don't want to bother him with my problems. Listen, time has no effect on God. God is not sitting in heaven going, oh, my goodness, it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon already. I got to go home. What am I going to do? I can't get it all done. God is not sitting in heaven with a to-do list that he's trying to catch up on. Time has no effect on him. And as we pray together in this room, as Pastor Aaron led us in prayer, God heard the prayer of Pastor Aaron from this stage, and all of you were praying at the same time. God heard all those prayers, and individually, one-on-one, personally, heard and dealt with every word from every mouth and all the thoughts that were there that weren't spoken but God knew about anyway. That's the God we're dealing with. He wants to hear from you. It's like a parent. I mean, as a parent, you probably had this moment where you know what a child of yours needs. You see it, but you're not going to intervene for whatever reason. Either you're trying to teach a lesson or you promised you'd leave them alone. You're not going to intervene, but you know what the child needs. And you're just sitting over here and you know what this child needs and you have the capacity to provide what this child needs and you're sitting here waiting for whatever reason. You're just sitting here waiting and waiting for that child to come to you and say, hey, would you help me with this? And when they finally come, you're like, whoa, why did you wait so long to come to me? I can help you with this. I think that's the way God's dealing with us so often. I think he's just looking at us saying, I think God's in heaven just waiting on some of us saying, you know, if you just ask me, if you just trust me, if you just trust my plan and lean on my power, it'll be all right. Folks, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to ask. I'm not sending you through give him his praise and surrender to his plan so that you'll never ask for anything. That's not what I'm doing. I'm I'm sending you through, give him his praise and surrender to his plan so that you'll ask in right attitude. But still ask. Approach the throne boldly, but not arrogantly. And then allow God's power to work in your life through the plan he has for your life. All right, we got three. This This one is, we give him his praise. All right, say that one, praise. Now this one is, we surrender to his plan. Everybody got that one? Plan. This one is, we, we ask for his power. His power. Now, now, let's read the next one. Read this together. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, for those of you who are freaking out, let's say it properly. Forgive us our trespasses as those who, those who trespass against us. There you go. I messed it up. You got it. All right, all right, all right. So, so look, watch, 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 watch. Give him his praise. Surrender to his plan. Ask for his power and live in his peace. Now, to live in his peace, you're going to have to do a few things. You're going to have to ask God to forgive you so you find peace personally. You're going to have to ask God to forgive you, forgive us our debts, forgive us our trespasses. You've got to ask God to forgive you because you'll find peace with God by asking him to forgive you. But there's a second half to that. As we forgive those who trespass against us, you've also got to extend forgiveness for everyone else because you can't live in peace until you have learned to live at peace with God and you have developed peace with the people around you. we got to live in his peace. And he gives us, watch, he gives us forgiveness through his blood when we ask him to forgive us. Amen? And he gives us through the Holy Spirit the power to offer forgiveness to those around us who sometimes don't even deserve it. But he gives us the power to do that anyway. And I got to tell you, if you are refusing to ask him for his forgiveness, you will not find peace because you can't find peace with your maker. And if you can't find peace with your maker, you can't find peace at your core. But if you refuse to offer that forgiveness he has given you out to other people, you will still not find peace because God's called us to be like him and live like him. And he's called us to live at peace with those around us. 
which means that prayer time all of a sudden becomes, oh man, difficult and awkward. Because I'm good with, God, you're great. You're awesome. Yay, God. I'm good with, God, the plan is yours. You do your thing, God. I'm following you. You just show me, Lord, you're in charge. Most of us are good with that. Most of us are good with the power. God, you can do anything. Come on, God. I Just come on, Lord. I'm going to follow you. You have the power. Lord, I trust you. But then we get to this peace part, and we're like, forgiveness? Well, I ain't done nothing all that bad. And if we get past that one, then we run headlong into forgiveness. Oh, mm -mm, no, no, oh, no. mm -mm. Love you, Lord, but. Not even you can let that one into heaven. (laughs) No. But if you don't learn to receive forgiveness from God and extend forgiveness to others, you'll never truly find peace. Because that's where peace exists. All right? Say, come on, preacher. I just I just want to pray. I don't want to go through all this. Yeah, I just want to send you through all this so you'll actually know how to pray. I'm going to give him his praise. I'm going to surrender to his plan. I'm going to ask for his power. I'm going to live in his peace. And I'm constantly going to, whoop, let's read this verse. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And I'm constantly going to pursue his purity. Look at that verse again. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. Y'all, I want to tell you something. Holiness is that place where I am so surrendered to God that what He prefers comes naturally to me. I'm going to say that again. Holiness is that place where I so surrender to God that what He prefers from me is what comes naturally to me. In other words, when I finally surrender to His purity, God's desire is always to protect us from the evil one. God never leads us into temptation. God always wants to keep us away from sin and temptation in our lives. The Bible's clear on this. If any of you are tempted, don't say God is tempting me because God does not tempt. God always wants to keep us away from that. I need to say something. I need to say something difficult, and I need you to hear me. If you struggle, if I struggle with temptation, that's not God's fault. That's my struggle. Because when I surrender to Him, what He wants to build into me is the purity that is what He calls me to. Holiness is what He's trying to do in my life. Holiness is what he's trying to build in my life. And if I will let go of all that sin, if I'll let go, if I'll take hold of his forgiveness, he'll help me let go of the sin. I got to say that again because that was good. You didn't react. Here we go. You ready? (laughs) Pay attention. If I will take hold of his forgiveness, he will help me let go of my sin. That's holiness. That's God teaching me to desire what he desires. That's really what this verse is all about. That's really what this request is all about. Now, when you pray, some of y'all are going, well, preacher, if I go through all that, man, like the food's going to get cold. (laughs) Hold on. Hold on. There are many different kinds of prayers. I'm not talking about all kinds of prayers. I'm not talking about the prayer, those what I like to call reminder prayers. When you pray over your food, it's a reminder. That's a reminder of prayer. It reminds you that you need to to be thankful because God gave you this food, okay? I'm not talking about that. You don't need to go through all all of this with that prayer. I'm not suggesting that. You know, reminder prayer is like when you go to bed at night. Y'all remember that prayer? Remember, now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And then they wondered why we were afraid when they left the room. That is such a creepy prayer. (laughs) Especially when you're like five. You memorize memorize the prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul. 
key. If I should die, pray the Lord my soul to take. And with all these video games out there of all these, like, bleh, reaching in, into people's souls and ripping out there, that's all they're seeing. Stop praying that prayer. Come up with something better. Lord, let me sleep well and have wonderful dreams tonight. Amen. That'll work. For a five-year-old, that works, all right? All right. Anyway, you know, reminder prayers. There's ceremonial prayers. This past week, uh, just, just Friday, Tina and I had the privilege of, I, I prayed the invocation prayer at a retirement ceremony for someone who retired from the Air Force. Uh, wonderful privilege, wonderful event. But that's a ceremonial prayer. I'm not going to go through all of this in a ceremonial prayer. Uh, but, but, but there are different kinds of, what I'm talking about today is when you get off by yourself and you start praying. You know when some of y'all need to practice these five steps is when you're driving to work. And save your salvation every day. You know? I mean, you, you just need to pray these. I mean, when, you, when you have time, you, you find time and you get off by yourself and you sit down and you start praying through these. And I want you to remember them. I want you to remember, because if we learn to pray, we learn to communicate properly with the God of heaven. And if we learn to communicate properly with the God of heaven, we learn to actually touch the heart of the creator. We learn to actually have a relationship with our creator, a relationship with our savior and a relationship that is properly placed. We see ourselves in right perspective. I give him praise because he's greater than I am. Amen? I surrender to his plan because he's smarter than I am. Right? I'm going to ask for his power because he's stronger than I am. Amen? I need his forgiveness and I need him to make me forgiving because he's nicer than I am. Amen? A lot of y'all can say amen at that point. I could too. And I need his purity because he's holier than I am. And I get my perspective in the right place. And I learn to talk to God. So watch this. We need to give him his praise. Everybody do that. Do this with me. Give him his praise. All right. We need to surrender to his plan. All right. We need to ask for his power. We need to. We need to. Um, <laughs> we need to live in his peace. And we need to seek his purity. I only have one word on my fingers, so the part before it I didn't write down. I get confused. Stand with me. Let's say this again. Would you throw it back up on the screen for me all the way through? Let's read this together again. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. God, today, we come to you in a spirit of prayer that is focused on who you are. We hear your teaching on this. Jesus, we praise you for the, for, the, for the symbol you've given us of how to pray to you. We praise you for the lesson you've taught. Now, Lord, teach us. Teach us to use what we learn in this prayer to communicate with you properly. Father, teach us to start every prayer, every day, by giving you praise for who you are, because you truly are more. Teach us, Lord, every day to surrender to your plan. Your plan is what's best for us anyway. Let us surrender to it. Teach us every day, Lord, to not fail to ask for your power to move in our lives. Lord, help us to tap into the power you have when our ability runs short. Father, teach us to seek and live in the, the, the peace that you've given us. Forgive us and teach us to forgive others. And Father, make us pure like you are pure. It's true, Lord. It's true, Lord. We're not enough. We never have been enough. 
We've never been enough to take care of the situations in our own lives, much less the situations in the world around us. But we serve a God that is more than enough. And while we sometimes wonder where strength will come from, while we sometimes wonder what direction will come from, while we sometimes wonder where our hope will come from, our hope comes from you. Because I am not enough. No one in this room is enough. All of us together are not enough. But your grace, Lord, your grace is more than enough. Your grace is enough today and tomorrow and everything we will face, things that we see, things that we don't see, things that we understand and things that we don't know can be covered by the grace of the God of heaven. We praise you today. We give you the glory. We live in your grace. In your name we pray. Amen.